Chicken congee is like the Asian chicken soup. It's comforting and delicious for those cold days or when you're under the weather. This is the perfect comfort food. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. Happy New Year to all of you. And to kickstart 2022, we have a very simple recipe, especially after all the rich eating after Christmas and Thanksgiving for you Americans, we thought we would kick off with a chicken congee. It is the scrawniest chicken I have ever seen. This is called a stewing chicken. And as food is getting more and more expensive, just to give you an idea, I paid over $10 for four thighs the other day. And this stewing chicken only cost me $3.88. So of course I had to buy one. And in my research, what I found is a stewing chicken is essentially a chicken that is done laying eggs or uh, it could also be a rooster. So the meat on a stewing chicken is much leaner and um, well, it's also older. So the meat is not as tender, but it'll be great in a congee or, um, or any kind of chicken stew that you can cook it for a long period of time or with a pressure cooker, it won't take as long, but using a pressure cooker will also break down the meat and extract all the flavor from the chicken. All Asians have their own version of chicken congee. And the very first time I tried Vietnamese chicken congee was at our favorite Vietnamese restaurant in San Francisco called Yummy Yummy. It was just an explosion of different flavors when I ordered this and I want to try to recreate it here. Starting off with an ounce of ginger and this is like a giant thumb size piece of ginger. And I'm just going to bruise it with my mallet because I find it'll be easier to scoop out. And if you want, you can also slice it thinly, but this is what I'm doing today. Okay, and I'm gonna throw that in my pressure cooker. I also have two stalks of lemongrass. I've already trimmed the bottoms and removed the first layer of the lemongrass. And I'm also just going to bruise these. Okay, and those two are also going into the pressure cooker. I'm making it in the pressure cooker because I really do want to break down the meat and um, and extract the flavors from the chicken. So I'm gonna put the chicken in here. Hopefully it'll fit. Adding eight cups of water. Doesn't cover the whole chicken, but that'll be fine. I'm also adding one cup of rice that I've already rinsed and added half a teaspoon of salt that I've mixed around to marinate it for about half an hour. My mother-in-law tells me that if I add salt to it and let it sit for a little bit, that it will help the rice to kind of bloom and break up. So that's what I've done here. I'm just adding this. Adding two teaspoons of kosher salt. and one tablespoon of fish sauce. Okay, putting it on the lid, locking it into place. Make sure that sealing knob is on sealing. And we're gonna cook this for 45 minutes on high pressure. If you do this on a stove top, it's gonna take you much longer. So I would say probably like I don't know, 90 minutes, two hours. But if you're not able to find a stewing chicken, you can do this with a regular chicken for sure. I would cut the cooking time down to like maybe 20 minutes. I also have a recipe in my Chinese home style cookbook that uses just chicken thighs. So like six thighs in the Instant Pot or in the pressure cooker uh, will get you a really good tasting congee as well. All right, so the cooking is done. I've let it a natural release for 15 minutes or whatever the number is. 17 says. minutes. 17 now. minutes now. There's still some pressure in there, so I'm just gonna release the rest of it. 
The reason why we let it natural release for at least 15 minutes is because when rice is cooking in the pressure cooker, it tends to bubble up. And so it could clog up your uh, vent if it's near the, like if it's bubbling near the top and then you don't want to do that because then it will just butter and spew everywhere. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Look at that. It looks so good. How you doing, scrawny chicken? <laughs> that chicken actually looks pretty good. The aroma coming from the pot is, is different from the other uh, jook that you make. Yeah, it actually, you can smell the lemongrass in here. Oh, it smells so good. Let's see if we can remove this without the chicken falling apart. I'm gonna stand back. <laughs> actually, it doesn't look, doesn't feel that bad. I think I can actually do it. Look at that. That's probably how tough the meat is. <laughs> but it is still edible. Okay, while I'm in here, might as well dig out the lemongrass and the ginger. I know you're in here. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, smells so good. Okay, I'm just going to remove the meat so that we have something to put in our congee. Actually, the meat is quite tender. So the pressure cooker really did a good job. But slim pickings. Well, it's enough for, for us. So I think I have about, what, maybe three cups of meat in here. That's good, not bad. Good job. For a little chicken. Yeah. The breasts were like really small. So you guys, we don't have to spend a lot of money to eat well. It's still better than, you know, mac and cheese from a box, if you ask me. If you chop up the chicken, you can also make it into like a chicken salad or I'm gonna use it in tacos or something. But like this, you can still eat it. So my kids don't necessarily think of this as comfort food because it's kind of, congee is kind of something I make for them when they're sick. So they associate this with sick food unless they can have all the things that they like to eat with it. So I'm talking about dried shallots or fried shallots, not dried, roasted peanuts and these salty deep fried bits of dough. <laughs> They're kind of like, I don't know, maybe like thicker wonton wrappers that have been deep fried. Yeah. Anyways, they've been deep fried. That's all they need to know. And having that with the kanji makes it all worthwhile. They also chopped up some green onions, cilantro. Of course, if you don't like cilantro, you don't have to use cilantro. And some lime if you want to add just a little bit more zing to your kanji. I think you forgot something. What? White pepper. White pepper. And of course, you can always have it with the Chinese donuts. They are those long... Deep fried oily deep, sticks. <laughs> yes, that's what they're called, oily sticks, yao tu. In Chinese, literally means oily stick. So I wasn't able to find any at the store yesterday, but you can absolutely have those with the kanji, and it would be amazing. All right, we're going to get a bowl ready here for dude. I'm just going to give this a stir. And the congee is just the perfect consistency. Look at that, creamy, and Yum. just thick enough, not too thin, not too thick. All right, leaving room to put all the things on. Put some chicken on there. A little bit of cilantro, a little bit of green onions, a couple of peanuts, some of this fried dough to sort of break it up. And kind of crumble it in there. Some fried shallots and a little bit of white ground pepper or ground white pepper. And that's it. Are you all ready for? Mm -hmm. Look at this. There's so much goodness going on in there. I can't hold on to it for very long because it's starting to burn my fingers. When it comes to kanji, when it comes to juk, there's all the things that go into it that make it a complete package of awesome comfort food to reproduce it at home. What we remember having it at Yummy Yummy in San Francisco on Irving Street. Shout out to Wilson, your restaurant rocks. We miss it very much. We'll go back there shortly when we can. When I was growing up, kanji, yes, was also a when you're sick food, but we weren't allowed any of these things because 
my mom thought, my grandma thought that, yeah, these things is going to make your cough worse. It's going to make your cold worse. So it's going to be like just plain congee, plain chook. And it was the worst thing ever. Sorry. <laughs> Squeeze of lime in there. Oh, it's a bit different. Mmm, smooth, lemongrass, mmm, different textures, those crispy bits. Oh, those are good. Let's try some of that chicken. Mmm, not tough at all, nice texture. But yeah, that overall flavor, mmm, good. Don't wait until you're stuck to eat this. This is good, anytime. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. I just tried some of the juk and it is so flavorful from that lemongrass. Super fragrant and you can totally taste it. Oh, so good. So for a similar recipe in my cookbook, Chinese Home Style, check it out. Just add some lemongrass and fish sauce and you're pretty much there. To check out more kanji recipes, see you over there.